Welcome to EFD, where we're looking at 10 January signings that we think can save your club season. We're heading all over Europe for this one, starting in Germany. Let's go. 10. Jonas Omlin After almost nine years and 335 matches, Borussia Mönchengladbach said goodbye to Jan Sommer. The Swiss number one was snapped up by Bayern Munich as a world-class replacement for the injured Manuel Neuer, and it left the Fulham without one of their most senior players midway through a campaign where they're looking to re-establish themselves back amongst the top dogs of German football. Fortunately, in Jonas Omlin, they've found a replacement keeper that should hit the ground running at Borussia Park. Also Swiss, Omlin arrived from Montpellier for 9 million euros, where he'd quietly developed a reputation as one of Europe's most reliable goalkeepers. Since signing with the French outfit from Baal in 2020, he's consistently maintained a save rate of over 74%. And last season, he made more saves than any other goalkeeper in Ligue 1. Unsurprising, really, when you clock that he kept eight clean sheets, a pretty remarkable effort considering Montpellier had the sixth leakiest defence in the division. Capped four times by his country, Omlin could be the difference to Gladbach tumbling down the table or maintaining their push for European football. 9. Bamba Dieng Another team reeling from the loss of their best player mid-season are FC Lorient in France, who saw Dango Watara snapped up by Bournemouth. The Burkina Faso international had scored six and assisted five this term, only outdone in the Le Melou squad by Terem Moffi, who also left in January. Make no mistake, Wataro will be hard to replace. But in Bamba the Yang, they've captured a promising young forward that has long been touted for a move to the Premier League. The 22-year-old enjoyed a breakout campaign at Marseille last season, netting eight times. A smart finisher with a strong defensive work ethic, Leeds United had agreed to sign Dieng in the summer, but at the last moment he rejected the move in favour of Nice, only to fail a medical and return to Marseille. His medical at Lorient did not go smoothly either. However, they proceeded with the transfer anyway, buoyed by his exploits for Senegal in Qatar, where he scored against the host nation. Provided Dieng can stay healthy and continue to score, then his 7 million euro move could be one of the bargains of the winter. 8. Danny Ings West Ham were in serious trouble entering the January window, with the threat of relegation looming over David Moyes this campaign. But contrary to their low position in the Premier League table, their defence hasn't really been the issue, with the Hammers actually on track to concede less goals this season than they did in 21-22. On the other hand, their attack is massively underwhelmed, with just 17 goals in 20 games to date, a rate that would see them barely reach half of the 60 goals they managed last season. It's not for want of trying, as no side has underperformed their expected goals as much as Moises, who should have found the net 27 times according to the metric. So, with both Mikael Antonio and Gianluca Scamacca misfiring at the London Stadium, it made sense to bring in a striker with pedigree, and Danny Ings is just that. The 30-year-old might be four years removed from his 22-goal campaign with Southampton, but he's always fulfilled his XG and has six goals already for Aston Villa this season in little over 800 minutes. It's a short-term signing, but if he can propel them away from danger in the tail end of the campaign, he'll have done his job. 7. Tete One of the best signings this January window could be Tete to Leicester. An absolute menace down the right flank for Leon this term, Tete can play on either foot, hug the wing or cut inside and will shoot from anywhere. 1.6 completed dribbles and 3.7 crosses per 90 are elite wide men numbers, while he leaves Leon as their second top goal scorer this season on 6. In fact, the 22-year-old is currently averaging 0.5 goals and assists per 90, something Leicester could really do with to save their faltering campaign. And his impact has been immediate for the Foxes. He took three shots, completed six dribbles, and scored on his debut in a 4-2 win against Aston Villa, while his presence allowed James Madison to move back into a central area. Often forced to play wide right this term, Madison is much more effective through the middle, demonstrated handsomely by his goal and two key passes at Villa Park. His link-up with Tete across the rest of the campaign will be one to watch. The 22-year-old is only on loan from Shakhtar the Nets until the end of the season, but if everything goes to plan, we think Tete will have a big future in the Premier League. 6. Mateus Cunha On paper, Wolves have done some excellent business. Craig Dawson, Mario Lamina and Pablo Sarabia all provide much-needed experience, but arguably none are as important as Mateus Cunha. Wolves desperately need goals, and the gamble on Diego Costa has been a dismal failure. In fact, with Sasa Kaladzic injured, 
Fabio Silva playing at PSV, and Raul Jimenez looking well past his prime. Wolves don't have a recognised striker in any sort of form. This is where Cunha comes in. Signed on loan ahead of a club record £43 million summer fee, the 23-year-old will spearhead Julian Lopetegui's attack. And although seven goals in 54 appearances for Atletico Madrid is hardly deserving of his price tag, Cunha still carries undoubted quality. As a teenager, he shone for FC Sion in Switzerland. A switch to RB Leipzig came too soon, but 12 goals in 39 appearances for a troubled Hertha Berlin side restored the Brazilian's reputation as a skillful and potent finisher. Clearly at his best in a side up against it, Cunha should flourish at Wolves. Their very survival depends on it. 5. John Brooks John Brooks's summer switch to Benfica was a disaster. His late arrival on the 1st of September meant he missed all of preseason and he never recovered, going on to feature for just three minutes off the bench. It only reinforced Greg Berhalter's controversial decision to keep Brooks out of the USA World Cup squad. But after five months, the centre-half has engineered an escape to Hoffenheim, and all the evidence suggests that this could be a big win for both parties. The Bundesliga is second nature to Brooks. Prior to Benfica, he'd spent his entire career in Germany, making over 200 bully appearances first with Hertha Berlin and then with Wolfsburg. The 30-year-old is well capable of being a dominant presence at the back, maintaining an aerial win rate of over 70% between 2018 and 2021, while also averaging seven tackles, interceptions and clearances per 90 in the same time frame. The 30-year-old joins a Hoffenheim side in poor form, and truth be told, they haven't improved much with the American in their ranks. Now winless in 10, and recently on the end of a 5-2 hammering away at Bochum. The early signs are ominous, but it's worth noting that TSG's squad has been riddled with injuries too, forcing them to field 31 different players this term. Once they get their best players back in the right positions, things should start to improve. Only then should Brooks' impact really be judged. 4. Morgan Sanson Most Aston Villa fans have probably forgotten all about Morgan Sanson, and for good reason. The Frenchman's 16 million euro switch from Marseille has been a total failure. In two years, Sanson only started six league games for Villa, failing to register a single goal involvement. It gets worse too, as from just under 650 minutes of action, he's actually taken as many shots as he has collected yellow cards clocking in at three apiece. That translates to roughly 0.3 shots per 90, a fifth of his career average. With Unai Emery also not interested in the 28-year-old, Santon has returned to France by signing on loan with Strasbourg, a team languishing in the league and relegation zone. After so little football for Villa, he'll need time to regain match fitness. But the early signs are promising. In his first game against Toulouse, Santon took two shots and completed three tackles, before being substituted after an hour. And then he popped up with an assist against Montpellier. It all shows that with a little love and affection, Sanson could be crucial to Lear Racing firing their way to safety. 3. Memphis Depay It's fair to say that not much has gone on in La Liga during this window, with the biggest move actually being Joao Felix's departure from Atletico Madrid to Chelsea, with the Blues paying 11 million euros for the Portuguese's services on a loan deal. But this move did allow Los Colchoneros to make a new addition to their squad as they look to turn this season into something respectable. And really, they couldn't have done much better right now than Memphis Depay. The Dutchman was clearly unwanted by Barcelona, just 18 months after they bought him in on a free from Lyon, with Atleti paying just 4 million euros to take him to the Spanish capital. What's easy to forget though is that last year, Memphis was Barcelona's top scorer as the Blaugrana managed to cling on to second in something of a down year. Now healthy after thigh trouble limited his game time earlier this season, as well as minimising his impact at the World Cup, the 28-year-old is back with a point to prove, having averaged 16 goals a campaign in his last five full seasons. And it can be done. Antoine Griezmann is having a resurgence at the Wanda after being outcast by the Catalans, and we're backing Memphis to impress too. 2. Marcel Sabitza Manchester United weren't a side expected to participate in transfer deadline day. However, after news emerged about Christian Eriksen's injury, Eric Ten Hag had to delve into the market. And with barely 12 hours remaining, it's safe to say that the Red Devils came up trumps. After being offered the likes of Isco and Sol Niguez, 
Old Trafford officials eventually settled on by Munich's Marcel Sabitzer, who arrives on a loan deal until the end of the campaign. The 28-year-old has struggled for minutes in Bavaria since joining from RB Leipzig in summer 2021, making just 15 league starts in 18 months with the German champions. Surprising, really, as he's a very tactically versatile player. The Austrian international is capable of playing anywhere in midfield, making his name as an attacking player at Leipzig, before taking up a more reserved role with Bayern. Sabitzer is almost a perfect replacement for the sideline Ericsson, and don't be surprised if Manchester United try and keep hold of him beyond May. 1. Southampton's business Ending the transfer window sat bottom of the Premier League with just one win in their last seven matches, things needed to change at Southampton. The manager already has, with Nathan Jones replacing Ralph Hasenhuttle, and in January, the Saints made five new signings. And it's hard to pick just one that might have the biggest impact on the South Coast. The first arrival was 30-year-old winger Mislav Orsic for just 6 million euros. The Croatian international brings continental experience, being Dinamo Zagreb's top European goal scorer of all time, as well as netting 78 times altogether in the last three and a half seasons. And the highly rated 20-year-old Chilean Carlos Alcaraz also turned up at St. Mary's, but it was their deadline day dealings that really got us going. Six foot seven Nigerian international Paul Onuachu arrived for £19 million from Belgian club Genk off the back of an incredible 75 goals in just two and a half seasons, with the 28-year-old hoping to provide some much-needed firepower to a lackluster attack. And who's going to provide for him? That'll be 20-year-old prospect Kamaldeen Sulemana, signed from Rennes for around £22 million. The Ghanaian international, a technically gifted dribbler and creator. If Southampton can't stay up after the impressive January they've had, then maybe they don't deserve to. So team, that was our 10 January signings that could save your club's season. But who have we missed? Let me know in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to the channel with notifications on if you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you next time.